Hello, I'm Paul Barraza, owner of JMC Building Inspections, and I'd like to show in this short video uh, some of the basics of retrofitting. And this is a typical small bungalow in the East Bay here. So first, I'd like to acknowledge uh, fellow inspector John Fryer for making this incredible model of a uh, typical East Bay bungalow and willing to share that with me so I could uh, mess it up and tweak it and use this as a way to show the basic concepts of earthquake retrofitting. So anyway, first we have all the structure of course and if you look at the structure, I'll zoom around you can see uh, all the way from the roof framing and down to the foundation everything's in this model, it's very detailed which is gotta say is pretty amazing and this is actually a good way to see uh, how the chimney sticks out like a sore thumb. It's this big heavy masonry structure next to a, a very lightweight wood frame structure and typically they don't do too well together in a big earthquake so this is not really the subject of this video but uh, if you're thinking about retrofitting you should probably also think about getting rid of that chimney. So what I'm going to do is remove some of the framing here to make it more clear to focus in on the retrofitting. So we'll get rid of the roof and chimney We'll get rid of the wall framing and just for now we'll get rid of the floor framing to make sure that it's clear. This is your basic substructure here and what we have is the, what we call a cripple wall around the perimeter. In this case we have a post and pier along the intermediate center wall that help support the floor framing. And just for clarity I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the post and pier so it's a little more clear. So what we'll do is we'll turn this around and we'll focus on a little bit of the uh, cripple wall over here. And the first thing you, what you want to do for a retrofit, and this is one of the three major elements, is you want to anchor the foundation mud sill, which is what this is right here, this uh, dark brown, typically redwood mud sill, needs to be properly anchored to the concrete foundation. So we do that with a couple different things. Here we have bolts here in the middle and at the edges what we have are called hold downs. Hold downs aren't always needed but um, typically on a narrower shear wall you need hold downs and a wider one you, you may not need them they might be superfluous but I thought I would show them just in case. In this case we also have some blocking that goes in between the studs. This is a stud here between the studs of a cripple wall. And the blocking is actually there for nailing, not so much for the bolting, but we're going to put plywood on these eventually. And we need to nail all the way around the plywood, otherwise it won't work. So we've got to have these blocks here for nailing the bottom edge of the plywood. You can cut off the old uh, mud sill and do a, what's called a flush cut, which is stronger, but you need a fancy saw. Not many people have those kinds of saws. So here we've anchored our mud sill down to the foundation. Next step is to add plywood. So here's the plywood that goes on the face of that. Uh, not shown here are the nails. Uh, it would be too tedious to put the nails in my model. But you would need nails in the plywood. And the pattern is basically all the way around the perimeter at a certain spacing. And then in the field you would go where the studs are to put those in. And it's really critical how do you space the nails how you set the nails. If they're driven too far in the plywood they can actually damage it and not be as strong. And the last but not least element, the three, third main element of a retrofit would be the shear transfer ties and that goes to the top. And Basically what the transfer ties are doing they're connecting the top edge of the plywood to the floor framing. And earlier I took out the floor framing to make it a little more clear so I'm going to zoom down here and we'll put the floor framing back in. You can see how the shear transfer ties are basically connecting uh, the top of the plywood to the floor joist. So now what we have is a very strong connection from the concrete to the mud sill, to the plywood, and all the way to the floor framing. The top of the floor framing is nailed by the subfloor and that's all connected together and it's all very strong. So there you go, you got your three main elephants, <laughs> not elephants, three main ele elements, and that shows you the retrofit. And what I'll do real quick, and to give you one more view, is just zoom in around the backside to see it all together. 
So we got bolting, anchoring, plywood, and shear transfer ties. Add the floor framing in once again. Well, I hope you found this video informative. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.